This is episode nine, titled Metamorphosis Through Metaphysics, subtitled Stages of Growth. And I'm here with my producer, John Beaton. Good generic time of the day to you. Hello. Hi. So welcome back into the studio. I only get to see Kat. Well, I see her on Sundays, but it's like every two weeks. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for offering this space. Um, and it's it's so beautiful to be able to check in mm. because before mm-hmm. we do these shows, we do talk a little bit mm-hmm. um, and then we go right into it because every time I start, you're like, save it for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So today, um, I, I just want to kind of recap the last episode a little bit. Yeah. That oh, was episode eight. Mm-hmm. Duh. Do you remember the title? <laughs> Um, episode eight was about, no, I don't, I actually don't remember the title, but I do remember that I was talking about, um, gratitude and I remember that it was right before I left to next gen. So I was talking about all the jitters that I had about not going and, and kind of, um, not wanting to grow more than enough. Yes. So that was the title for last uh, episode eight is more than enough. If you haven't already, go ahead and listen to that. Before we get into this, I really wanted to do a few shout outs because our numbers are growing and this is a very exciting time. Um, I wanted to shout out all the people listening here in the United States. Of course, thank you. You are appreciated. Please send me an email. Let me know how you feel. Let me know what this um what is, what, is, what is this doing for you? Um, what would you like to hear more of? I am here and I am listening. And um, so we have shout outs for, from Slovakia, the UK, Sweden, Germany, France, Canada, Argentina, French Polynesia, and Ireland. Um, I'm so glad that you guys are listening. And it really touches my heart to know that my voice is going all the way out there. I would love to hear your voice. Send me an email at yoginifromtheblock at gmail.com. And I will be reading those personally. So now we're going to shift in to our talk for today. And the reason why I wanted to recap was because this is coming from what happened at the retreat. Um, What what I came back with. What was the retreat? Just for those people that didn't hear the last Mm -hmm. episode. Uh, Next Gen. uh, The Next Gen retreat is for the New Age community, the New Thought Community? Thought, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's for individuals from the ages of 18 to uh, 35. And um, we went up north into um, the Redwood Forests and um, we stayed up there with no Wi Fi. Um, I really want to highlight that because that scared the bejesus out of me. Um, not to be connected um, and not to be able to know what was happening in the world. I felt like I was missing something. Um, mostly because, you know, um, of what I do for a living, which is a communication strategist. I do marketing and, um, I went up there last week and as some of you heard, I had such a resistance to go up there, but I did it and I did it. And it had me thinking today because Next week, I'm going to Kyle Cease. I'm going to go see his Evolving Out Loud at the Dolby Theater. And Kyle Cease talks about basically becoming a butterfly. Once you're a butterfly, you can no longer go back to being a caterpillar. And he talks about this whole um, this whole shift and change of who you are becoming to, to becoming this beautiful butterfly um, that's able to fully express who you are. And so... I took this and I went into my into my little <laughs> my little cocoon, my little um, sorry, they call it crystalluses now, right? I went into my little that to kind of digest this, to really take in what this means because um, I was like, okay, so you grow once and then that's it because I feel in my experience, it's not just a one time thing. It's not like you grow once and then boom, you're done, you're a butterfly. In my experience, what I've lived, it's you grow and you're like, oh, okay. I've grown a little bit. I can tell. I can feel it. I know it. People around me can see it. But I'm not a butterfly yet. And then, boom, again, it happens. And I'm like, but I'm still not a butterfly. Like, I know it. I know what my butterfly looks like. And I think at this point, I have, I have, I'm in my chrysalis. 
right? So I, I really did some research on what what happens with a butterfly, and I want to explain this. I'm in, I'm not a scientist by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so if you want, but learn, you don't have to be. No, no, no. But I do want to put that out there because if you want to know more about butterflies, this is amazing. I suggest you look it up. Yeah, I'm going to give you my synopsis, right? My little cliff notes. So it it turns out that caterpillars actually have like five stages of growth, right? I thought it was one time, like you're a caterpillar and then you're, you're like a little cocoon thingy and then boom, you're a butterfly. Apparently, you, there's, this little, there's this little like egg, right? And then out of this egg comes this, this uh, caterpillar. And the caterpillar's sole job is to eat. Just eat. Just eat. Like, just go out there and, and eat. And I thought that was interesting because in this whole evolution for me, in my personal growth, I feel like all I've been doing is ingesting information. Yeah. Right? You've in, been eating. All I've been doing is eating. Sucking it up. Just, you know, finding... A sponge. Yes, just finding information. But you're also not finding just any information. It's like a quote you may have read in one of the books I loaned you mm-hmm. is let your quest not be like a garbage can that collects everything that comes its way. Right. And that's exactly what a caterpillar does. So caterpillars are very, um, they're very picky. Picky they, eaters. huh? They are. You would think that they just eat anything and they don't. They find up their mother's lay their eggs in in a particular plant so that they can thrive not just any they they pick a particular plant so that they can thrive depending on what type of butterfly it is and of course what kind of caterpillar that's going to become and so i i'm i'm watching this video i watched a few a plethora of videos honestly on what this evolution looks like and as I'm watching, I'm I'm relating it to myself and how I'm growing. And I realized that for 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 me at least, there is no like first of all, I'm never gonna get there. I'm never gonna get there. And it's not a bad thing. I'm never gonna get there because it's it and I'm glad. This is why. Because if I were to be a caterpillar and then just be a butterfly and then that's it, then then that's it. That's it. And what am I what am I racing for? Right. Um, and then second, it's it's a recycling. Right. So. In in theory, it's almost as if we are caterpillars, we go through we like go through our stages and then we become butterflies. And then all of a sudden we have this new area in our lives where we haven't worked on. And that area of our lives is still um, not done. So this area of my life, like, let's say there's career, there's career relationships and finances. So my area of, let's say relationships, that that's blooming for me when it comes to my friends, when it comes to my family, when it comes to my boyfriend, when it comes to the people around me, that's blooming. That's a butterfly for me, but there's still this area over here that I haven't quite worked on. And that's what I need to work on. That's my caterpillar right now. Mm -hmm. Knowing. Does that area have a name for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's this financial uh, savviness. Wow. Financial savviness, like really and truly understanding the value of money and separating myself from money. Mm -hmm. Like money does not define me. Like my relationships do not define me, but I can define my relationships and what I want those to look like. And I can define my financial stability and what I want that to look like. Right. And then career. I feel like that's a part that's also on its way. It's it's blooming but it's not there because i know what i want it to look like Mm -hmm. and in terms of my relationships that's still going to be turning into a more beautiful um wide widespread butterflies right so then i started to break it down for myself if i were going to explain this to someone that i truly love because that's how i do these podcasts like how am i going to explain this to to my best friend how am i going to explain this to my little sister i want you to truly understand and it come from a place of love right so the first stage i looked at was who am i like who are you like what who are you in this 
because in order for us, and we've said this in our previous um, podcast, in order for us to go anywhere, we really need to truly know who we are in order to respect ourselves and, and to honor ourselves and to honor the people that are around us. Mm-hmm. Right. And then where are you going? Where are you going? Who are you and where are you going? Like, what is your vision? And then comes what I truly took out of this retreat. And I just keep going back to it, but it's boundaries. What are the boundaries that I have had? And what are the boundaries that I need to create in order to feel comfortable in who I am becoming? And compassion. In in these steps aren't like do number one, number two, number three. It's more, it's, it's, it's kind of like a side steps. You know, you can hit all of them and you can hit them constantly, but compassion, truly having compassion for myself and for the people that I'm talking to and the people that I interact with, knowing that they're on their very own journey. And I need to, I need to honor that. I can't, I can't throw you into a cocoon because you're not ready yet. And I might be a caterpillar throwing you into a cocoon. Like, who am I to tell you what you need to do? Um, Compassion is a really big one. And this morning I heard um, Oprah talk about remembering who she is. Remember, like remember where you came from and not only who I am as an individual, but my ancestors. Remembering what that looks like. So that I can, as I move forward, I can build the bridge for those that are where I was once. Mm. If that makes sense. I feel like that wasn't even in English. No, no, no. Sort of model it. Yeah. So others could actually possibly use that model? Yes. So knowing where I came from, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing, Knowing where I came from and then being able to build that bridge to where I am. And not forgetting, not forgetting that they, that although I am thriving, although I am moving forward, although I have worked very hard to be where I am, I remember where I came from and I, I can relate to where, I can relate to where a 17 year old struggling is, like what that looks like for her. And I can't, I can't belittle her story and saying, honey, everything is going to be okay. Don't even worry about it. Like, no, her story is very true because my story was very true for me. And building that gap, building that bridge to, to fill in that gap mm-hmm. that, lives, that lives there. And then last one, which is really the first one, is growth. Because as I'm building these bridges, as I am remembering and honoring and being compassionate and building boundaries... I'm constantly growing and accepting that growth. So all of this really came as I'm looking at the journey of a caterpillar into a butterfly. And and really remembering to honor my own story. Just honoring that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I go into this retreat, um, next gen, and the first thing we did was build boundaries. We created agreements so that I can speak freely and not offend someone else. And when I came back, what I realized was that I needed to arrange, rearrange the boundaries that I had here because I had, um, I had gone into this metamorphosis while I was away and now I no longer fit into the, into the mold of what I had left here. And so I had to go into meditation. I had to go into prayer. I had to speak to practitioners to just be like, can you help me? I don't know what this is, but I'm feeling uncomfortable. And I had to, Remember who I was. And it, these are like, these are steps that I just keep going through. And we've said this time and time again about the um, inventory, 
right? At the end of the mm-hmm. day of like mm-hmm. what I've done, who I've talked to, what I've said, how was I feeling? What am I feeling now? And how could I do it better? And how could I do it better? Right. So I had to remember who I am. Mm-hmm. And I had to remember where I, I am going. Mm. What is the bigger goal? Because I, and I was talking to you before we even started our podcast, that I'm, I get so busy trying to work out the details of my life and trying to, and actually working on what I say I'm doing, <laughs> right? Actually doing that. And I know that a lot of my friends do that as well. So if this relates to you, really stick in here. Stepping back and looking at the bigger picture. Ste- stepping back and remembering who am I, where am I going? Because as 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 we move, as we're like growing as, from these little caterpillars, we start to see other caterpillars and how they're evolving a lot faster. And we start to get nervous. And you would think, well, I would think anyway, um, how do I catch up to him? How do I catch up to that butterfly over there? Like, who am I? And you start, I start filling myself up with, with thoughts of fear, with thoughts of uh, negativity, with thoughts of anger towards myself. Mm-hmm. And at those points is where I take inventory. And as, and as I am being more conscious and as I am taking classes, this inventory thing, it never stops. It's a, it's a very, it's, it's a cycle. It never stops. And this is what I want to highlight right here is that once you have like gone through your metaphor, metamorphosis, you can't go back. Like you can't put that skin back on. Like you can't, you're not going to fit into it. It's almost like, like you it, no, it is because you've outgrown it. Mm. Right. And mm. once you're, once you have expanded, you can't retract. Mm-hmm. You just don't fit. And so this is where I was trying to retract myself, trying to find out how I can make myself small again so that I can make myself comfortable again because I'm so uncomfortable. And then I realized I can't like, that's just something that I I can't do and neither do I want to. So if I've expanded, what do I do now? Now I have to take inventory and look at my boundaries Look at who I am. Look at where I'm going so that I can expand and I can renegotiate the boundaries that I've created for myself so that I may continue to grow, so that I may continue to to be more of myself. If I may, Mm -hmm. one way to think about it are to sort of look and assess the vows you make. So one of the vows, typically they come like, I will never, ever again X, you know, or I will always do this. These are vows we make to ourselves. Does that make sense or is it useful? It, yeah, it does make sense. It's almost like, it's almost like your, your self marriage, your marriage to yourself, sure. right? Yeah. And in a marriage. And what are those vows? Right. You create these, you, you create these agreements with someone and mm-hmm. with yourself. Yeah. Only it's, That's what it's I'm singular. About. Yeah. 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 And as you grow, you need to take inventory mm-hmm. and check in to see if those vows still work like values. Yeah. You can change them. That's the beauty of them. It's just like, oh, okay, well that's not working for me anymore. I want to change it when I want to reword it. And that's just a little piece of, it's a tweak. Mm-hmm. It's a programming tweak is really what it is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So it brings me into the next phase, right? So mm-hmm. once a caterpillar goes in through like it's it's gone through three or four stages of its metamorphosis into a bigger and bigger caterpillar, it then it then makes itself into a little cocoon thing and then it turns into a chrysalis. Here in this chrysalis is right before they turn into a butterfly, right? And this is what John is talking about about um reprogramming this is where all the reprogramming happens Mm -hmm. because now the caterpillar no longer needs the big belly to Mm. digest food because now it's going to be um you know helping pollinate the flowers so it needs to be a little lighter on its feet exactly so that's one thing that needs to change for the caterpillar another thing is that it like grows um 
it actually has eyes now. I don't know if caterpillars have eyes, but butterflies have eyes and they have eyes in order to find a mate mm -hmm. and to see flowers and to see colors. So there's a reprogramming done from not having the, that sense to now, now including eyes mm. and it grows like I now have eyes. Yeah. I can now see. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is an entire DNA reprogramming that happens in this chrysalis. And so This stage is really where we check in with our values. And those are the values that we created with at that point where we decided who we are and what we, where we are going. So what I learned is that I can have a set of values, 12, 13 values, mm -hmm. and I can rank them and I can look at them and, and those are my values And then I can look at them next month and they can completely change and that's okay. The key is knowing that they have changed. The key is revisiting them and allowing them to be different if need be. Because if I am constantly growing, my mind is constantly expanding, then I am constantly shifting and I need to be aware of how I'm shifting and what is shifting. And then here is the last stage. Finally, once the butterfly is ready inside the, the little chrysalis that it has created, it um, starts cracking through and it comes out of the, the chrysalis that it's been living in. And I thought, I don't know why I thought this. I thought they just flew out like whoosh, they were gone out to. Sure. Right. Because that makes sense. Apparently, they need time. Hmm. They need time to let their wings dry because it's almost like you take your when you take your clothes out of the washing machine. Mm -hmm. Right. So they start pumping blood through their veins that go through their wings mm -hmm. so that their wings are like, OK, we got to wake it, up now. Yeah, right? yeah. So if any of you could see <laughs> Catherine right now, she is like her her hands are going out. Mm -hmm. She's she's. She's fanning her wings. She's pumping her wings. She's getting blood into them. I am getting ready to exactly. go and fly. Exactly. So this is what's happening. And I thought that this was absolutely amazing, which means that once we become butterflies, there is still work that we need to do to really be ready and take flight. So the constant work that we've been doing with reestablishing and understanding our values, our vowels, um, who we are, where we are going, what our boundaries are, continuing to have compassion, remembering where we came from, knowing that we were once caterpillars too, and the growth that we have made to make it to this point, we're still doing work after we've become butterflies. We're still doing work. Right. So at this point, we we are now settling into our new bodies We're we're seeing the beauty that we are. Mm -hmm. Right. And we are allowing ourselves to be ready to take flight. And the reason why I think this is so beautiful and so powerful is because, again, there is this there is this memory of me when I was 22, 23, and I thought I just don't have it together. I'm never going to have it together. What am I supposed to do? I should be making a thousand million gajillion dollars. I'm making up a number at this point because I don't remember what I thought I should have at that point. The point is that I, I thought after college, that's it. I should be making it. I should be thriving. And I was, I was really belittling myself. <sighs> The butterfly does not belittle itself because its wings are not dry. And thus, I will not belittle myself because my wings are not dry. They're getting ready for me so that I can take flight, so that I can go on a flower and I can pollinate and I can create this world that I am envisioning. And this is, it has been so transformative to me to understand and know that there is more than one level of metamorphosis for a caterpillar. And for whatever reason, like I remember going through this in second grade, I don't remember a caterpillar going through more than one. And yeah. remembering that, just looking at the, the divine organization, 
right? The, the, the harmony that happens. It's so, because no one tells the caterpillar, like, you're ready, go ahead. The caterpillar knows, like there are chemicals that are released and the, the caterpillar knows. And the caterpillar isn't, isn't complaining. Like I just eat and I eat and I'm not ready. Like it's doing its thing. And so for this, this message was really for me. To remember that I'm doing the work, to remember that I am exactly where I need to be, to remember that exactly where I am is 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 exactly who I am. I'm doing the work. I am I am remembering who I am. I know where I am going. I am recreating those boundaries for myself so that I am comfortable and so that the people around me are comfortable because I am remembering to be compassionate. Knowing that just like my wings need space, the people, the butterflies next to me also need their space. And remembering where I came from so that I may continue to bridge that gap. So that I may continue to grow. And so that the, the bridge that I've created will allow the people that are coming over it to grow as well. And I'm just, I'm... <laughs> I am incredibly grateful. I am incredibly grateful for this newfound understanding. And if this message has in any way, shape or form moved you, touched you, reached you, share it with one other person, one other person. And this is how this is how movements happen, literally through movement, moving, moving the message forward. Because there is an entire community that I met and just reignited this fire that lives within me. And I see what they're doing. And I see that there are so many of us waiting for our wings to dry. And so as we're all waiting, can we, can we like fan each other? Can we fan each other so that we can all grow? Can we, can we help one another? Because it, it really comes down to it really comes down to this support. And so if you are listening, I appreciate your support 100,000%. Send me an email. I am waiting for it. I appreciate you and thank you.